It's a great joy to be in the presence of the Lord this afternoon. The Lord has been faithful to us. So this afternoon, we are here to worship our maker. It is believed that whatever we praise him for, it is preserved. Can we read a book of Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 6? And it says, there is none like you, O God. You are great and great is your name in might. Wherever you are, I want you to bless the name of the Lord. Exalt the name of the Lord. Let him know that there is none like him. In the heavens and the earth, there is none like him. There is none besides him. There is none before him. Because he's the I am that I am. Ah, the God of yesterday, the God of today, the God of tomorrow. Wherever you are, wherever you are, bless the name of the Lord. Lift the name of the Lord up on high. For he is worthy, he is worthy. There is none like you, O oh God. There is none like you, O oh God. There is none like you, O oh God. We have tried and tested, and we have realized that there is none like you, O oh God. Wherever you are, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. In your cars, in your offices, bless the name of the Lord. Because he is mighty, and because there is none like him. There is none like him. Bless the name of the Lord. Lift his name up on high. Exalt his name. Mahindi Shadabos Kotoromiyane. Imama Imame. There is none like you, O God. There is none like you, O God. O Biara Nihuane was set. Ah, ever when him knew a cheat. O Nami Biara Nihuane was set. I'm tired of Baba. Mahindi Shadabos Kotoromiyane. Imama Imame. Don't get tired of worshiping him. Wherever you find yourself, bless the name of the Lord. Exalt his holy name. For there is none like him. There is none like him. There is none before him. There is none besides him. In the heavens and the earth, there is none like him. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Imama, imame. Kapo, shapa, kape. Antayana, baba. Mindy, shada,
thank God again for the opportunity to come your way with Midday Springs. It's been, it's been great. It's been wonderful in the sight of the Lord. And as we fast and pray and wait upon him, we know that the Lord is showing himself to us. I, I want to believe that in this season, as we talk about how God revealed himself to Moses and subsequently to Israel, how God managed to help Moses to know himself and Moses so far is still knowing himself and how God is showing himself strong, proving himself within the context of the ministry of his servant Moses. I trust that the Lord is doing the same with you or the Lord has begun that same journey with you. We are in Exodus chapter 9 and the story hasn't changed that much. So, the behavior of Pharaoh is practically the same as he began with. Um, where the change is taking place, as we are seeing, is in the level of resistance in the lives of, of his magicians. And subsequently, we will see it also happening in Pharaoh. But overall, the picture we are seeing is that God has called Moses. He's commissioned and he's sent him. We have seen that God has made himself known to Moses. He has allowed Moses to know himself. We have seen that God is introducing himself powerfully to the context of the ministry of of Moses but then when Moses began his ministry from chapter 5 what we saw was the fact that what Moses expected one who has had an encounter with God one who has met God on Mount Horeb he stood on the ground the Lord said take your shoes and, and make sure your bare feet touch the holy ground I mean the Lord said lay your, your staff on the, on the floor eh? and then he did it and his staff became a serpent he, he took it and it is, it is a, a, a staff again and, and, and the Lord gave him signs and he, he sure he knows that he has met the Lord then the Lord says that now go to Pharaoh tell him let my people go and then he goes he says let my people go and it is trouble it is trouble so Moses is really having a hard time fortunately at the time when the Lord was commissioning him, he told him that Pharaoh would be difficult. But Moses should have understood it, yeah. Perhaps that is what God said. So, the plagues have begun. Because of the stubbornness of Pharaoh, the plagues have begun. And it is, we have seen it severally. And I think over here, we will see it being said again in the next few days. That God has said that when he sends his servant into any contest for ministry the servant who has been sent should have known God one, two, should have known himself and the final thing is that the contest of your ministry must also know the God you are serving so at this particular time God is now revealing himself to Moses' contest child of God maybe in your workplace some people have decided that because you fear God they will gang up against you and, and right now you, you, are in, you are in difficulty and, and you are finding it difficult it looks like no one likes you it looks like you are the old one out and stuff like that and whatever you do people find fault they are setting traps against you and all that don't worry very soon that contest will begin to see the God you are serving provided 
you are walking according to his word that is one key thing everyone who is walking according to God's word after you have known God and you have known yourself your contest will also know who your God is so God says that I would harden the heart of Pharaoh he will be stubborn it will give me the opportunity to do many signs that the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord that one is very important and so sometimes God will harden the heart of your enemies so that they'll be stubborn and all their stubbornness will give God the opportunity to prove himself strong Jesus so welcome to chapter 9 chapter 9 verse 1 says and the Lord said to Moses go into Pharaoh and say to him this is what the Lord says the God of the Hebrews let my people go that they may worship me this is the feet plague and the sixth time Moses and Aaron had gone to Pharaoh and watch this the instruction God gave them the first time they went it has not changed still the same thing um, yesterday or the day before the last when we're reading looking at chapter 8 I was talking about the fact that sometimes some Christians try to enter into negotiations with the devil as if they, they want to they want to change the devil or they, they, they want to convert it doesn't happen when God speaks he is not a man that speaks and when situation changes you have to change what you have said he is the God who declares the end from the beginning God knows what he's saying let my people go and God has not changed his word no negotiations it is the same message we have to learn how to work with the consistent God carrying a consistent message displaying a consistent lifestyle God has not changed his instruction. Still, let my people go. And what it means is that as a child of God, as a servant of God, as a handmaiden of God, when God gives you an assignment and the situation is difficult, he doesn't ask you to adjust and to amend and to massage the thing so that it will suit the situation. Stand where God says you should stand and leave the rest to him. Praise God. The fourth verse teaches us that when God was bringing plagues, he's not forgotten his people. He's still making the distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. There's a huge distinction. He says that this is what I will do. I will make a distinction between my people and the Israelites. The Lord knoweth them that are his. That is what Apostle Paul tells Timothy. This, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And so he will make a distinction between those who belong to him and those who do not belong to him fast forward to verse 11 like i started talking about two episodes or so ago the resistance of egypt is now changing it's now changing so we saw how when the frogs came up Pharaoh asked the magicians to do something. Instead of reducing the frogs, they multiplied the frogs. And it was very useless for Pharaoh. He wanted the frogs to leave. And so when you come also do magic to let more frogs come, you are not adding anything. But something interesting has happened here. Let's go to verse 11 of chapter 9. So when the sixth plague came, it was a plague of boils. And the boils came upon everyone. So the Bible says that when the boils came, uh, the magicians now want to prove to their, or has always been trying to prove to their Pharaoh that they too they are powerful. But something happened here in verse 11. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils were on the magicians as well as on all the Egyptians. <laughs> the magicians who normally perform the miracles, because you see, the things that were happening were external to them. 
Frogs. Frogs are not part of their life, so they also do something. And then they see flies, and flies come in, and they want to do something so that the flies will go. And then, and then there's river Nile turning to something, and then animals are dying. This is the first time a plague is touching the body of human beings. And when it touched everybody, the magicians also had this plague. Now, they were going to think about how to handle their boils and not to come and do magic to anyone. This is where God now started touching them. But the good thing is that Israel and Moses had been very faithful. Very faithful. Very faithful. It has been difficult, but they have been very faithful. But the Lord had in Pharaoh's heart still, and Pharaoh would not let them go. I see something in verses 15 and 16, and God is repeating the reason why he's hardening the heart of Pharaoh. He says, verse 15, By now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague, and you would have been obliterated from the earth. However, I have let you live for this purpose to show you my power and to make my name known on the whole earth. Mamin can you see? Mamin can you see? See, I thought that there is a difficulty. Bibi wa wa eye ya obi tata o situation be how? Bibi titi wa bo hum pa ya o ni pe bi wa wa bra bo mu a o titi o wa bo hum pa ya enko nyaku bon se. I thought that otumi mo wa tan fort na hoche and you say, what time for no more power? Inti, we pray about na anu nye ding, Debi. Nyako bonsu wa shada mo mo atina wa che. O se obe tumi, akata ne ni te, nanka we yo mo efri ho. Na so wa shada, o peso mo nye ni che. No omu hume wuladi tumi. Na mo nge chongu shire nye, shire nye na ye hume se, de radibe ye woni. He told Pharaoh, look, I can finish you in no time and then let this Israelite go without a contest. But I am not going to do that. I am seizing opportunity to harden your heart and let all the nations that surround know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Whatever God is doing in your life, may it let the nations know that your God is God. Something interesting is now happening to the resistance of Egypt. Verse 20. Verse 20. Now when the hail, the plague of the hail was coming. The announcement was that God was going to rain hailstone and fire in the land of Egypt. Albeit, he will make a distinction between Egypt and his people. But he gave them a warning. Everybody should let, if you don't want your animals to die, if you, you human being, you also, if you don't want to die, then go and hide. Go and hide. If you don't hide on such a day, you will die when the hailstone comes. See, what it means is that <laughs> Pharaoh person chere say o yenyame. Nti onu okasa e say say Misraim for no etie. Say say a contest na aba no. Say mo se nyakopon no so kasa. No ma curfew. Na u di nyak mo se nyakopon ni curfew no so a. Say say wa kuto no. So the contest is Shall we listen to what the God of Moses is saying, or we should ignore him and say, Tria? Should we all go inside and hide and say that we are afraid of what the God of Moses will do? Then you have all, all of you have just given up and you have just kind of put your Pharaoh to shame. So the people were told, Shall we hide or shall we stay? But something interesting happened, verse 20. Verse 20, it says, Those among Pharaoh's officials who feared the word of the Lord made their servants and their livestock flee to shelters. But those who didn't take to heart the Lord's word left their servants and their livestock in the field. And all these people kaput. So now, the reason why God did not, the reason why God did not kill Pharaoh and all Israel, day one. They would have all died as sinners. Once he had been Pharaoh's heart small and he had the opportunity to show himself strong in Egypt, now he has one convert. Some people now fear the Lord and the God of Moses. Now he has converts. God is wise. 
is why it's gone. Converts have been made. So sometimes some believer, you suffer small. And your suffering is to allow somebody to be born again. Somebody to mature. Somebody to be discipled. Somebody to become better than he or she is. But may grace abound. So that we can do this. Some people in Pharaoh's house have become better. Then, interesting thing happened. Verse 26. No, verse 27. Moses, Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron. Then he said, I have sinned this time. My ebony. Hey, brother Pharaoh, you are not giving up. He says, my ebony. Then he makes a statement. He said, the Lord is the righteous one. I and my people, we are the guilty ones. We are kind of correct. It's breaking, yeah, Boboba. It's breaking, it's Boboba. Then Pharaoh begs Moses, go and pray to your God for me so that this hill will go. And Moses, in verse 29, see what Moses said. When I have left the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord and the thunder will cease and there will be no more hail so that you may know that the earth belongs to the Lord. Then verse 30, and Moses says, Pharaoh, I don't trust you. He says, but as for you and your officials, I know that you still do not fear the Lord God. I don't trust you. Your nose is shaking. I don't trust you. Because why are you say, you had in your heart it is because the Lord wants to punish you well, well but we can see that the power of God being manifested in Egypt is making great waves so, so child of God as part of your work with God God can bring you to a situation where he can allow your suffering to increase to widen to stay on for a longer time everything is working together for good because in Moses' life the elongation and the sustenance of his pain have brought people in Egypt who fear the Lord. May it be so in your life and much more so in Jesus' name. Amen. Raba ke te tele bele baha prado le ba aye sele prado sanamaha ye ke ve ke prado le ba te ara thank you father thank you father le ve sala prado se ma to le ve are ke ze prana la ma tele riando se ta raka ba parola aye sele ba sele bele boha re ke se ne ma ro le ba ha aye anta la pra vele pro ke pele ha to se le pre ba lo sale ma ha ki akwa aye anta le bele pre de la do se ye ke za na pa lo ba ha aye anta le bele pro de ba ko ada la ma ka za ka re ba ha aye anta le bele pre ba ye pe sa lo pra ro le ba ka aye ka zo te le bele pro de ha le pre ba za ka le pre te an to Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Lepres Alvadia do Kadaha. In the name of Jesus. Child of God, you want to bear with me? That on these studies that we have been on for this all this while, you are telling the Lord that in every situation you find yourself, that you don't know which way to turn. You want to try and cry unto the Lord that He should show you which way to go. You see. For Moses to know God and for him to know himself and for his contest to know the Lord, he sought for help from God. You want to cry to God and ask him for help. That in these seasons of your life, God will come through for you. He will grant you grace that you will be able to go through no matter the setback, no matter the child, no matter the pain. Because out of it, some people will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and cry unto the Lord. Lift up your voice and cry unto the Lord. Rabu Sadabaha. Arebele bele do sekede. Leme karo sele praro lavaha. Raka sebe sadalari andele mehe. Eke pa prato sele bele andosika. Arapa le praro le makasa. Ayanta le bretele bedahaka. 
Arosele bravo se va. Aya ke le bele prekada. Aye kreze kalori ando ba. Marosele bravo le bele yanda. Are kreze ke le ando la ba. Ara kare se tala bravo se. E prevalo la ba kare yanda. Raka saba brala la yanda. Aya kara ba la yanda se bela. Raka paga bele le yanda se ta. E ma karo se le ba kara da. Iya ka ba brala la yanda. Raka paza ta ya ba da. Aye ka pre. La Rosia Tara, Aria Telemarosa, Raka Paranta de Bratalia, Atrasela Maria Dala Mariana, Reke Paralaria Duba, Mare Celebra Taroliana, Aye Telebele Prata, Aya Pere la Rosa, Le Prepararia Duba, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, thank you, Father, Aro de Bataleria Duba, in the name of Jesus. You are praying and asking God to grant you grace to walk in the place where he has called you to walk in. That you not negotiate with the devil to change your stance for God. You are telling the Lord, God, grant me grace to walk in the purpose, in the calling, in the ministry, that which you have called me to do. And grant me grace to walk faithfully so that, Lord, as I stand the test and go through the challenges, you work it out all for my glory. You want to lift up your voice and ask the Lord to grant you grace to walk in it that he has called you. Lift up your voice and pray right now. Ralo Semaha, Raka Beka Lole Yadvaseta, Lepre Valo Salemaha Kiyadvada, Arekeze Kalo Prakeze Karaha, Aresete Lepre Tanyana, le prevara se ranta le andokia, area quasi tele maruka, yege parole vada, la pravare se ganta le anda, atrase la malosia, acrepe le prarola vaha, yege sana maria neva, atrase anda le la ronda, le prevalo le ande casa la vaha, are caro se le veri andoka, le prevalo sariana maha cariana, reke salo prarola vaha, aye salema cariane vaha, le prevalo Child of God, you are praying and telling the Lord that as you remain resolute and obedient to his word, he should let his power manifest in your life, in your job. In whatever you find in the marketplace, whatever you find yourself in your workplace, God Himself should honor His word by manifesting His power in your place so that they will see that you have been faithful to Him. And because you have been faithful to Him, He will honor you with His presence. Lift up your voice and pray that His manifest power will show up on your behalf and grant you grace. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. <laughs> Le prevala kare le malaria de kara ha raka se mata le le preva ye be le be pralo le be kare na reke sara pralo na se le be haka are se ta sare pralo na ba are sara ba ya na aro sara ba ke le be le ya na aro se le be le ya no rako sara ba ya de la ba ara kala ba ya kare ya de kapa reke se ke kalori ya na ba ara kale kala kare ya ko le ya na le thank you father in the name of jesus father i want to thank you for this afternoon, we know of a truth that that which you have begun to work in us, both to do and to will of your good pleasure, will surely come to fruition. We pray that you grant us grace, Father, to stay with you, Lord, to stay focused, so that we will not be distracted with any negotiation from the enemy. We will stay in obedience to your word, that, Lord, you manifest your power on our behalf to show the world that you have power to use all the evils to even win souls for yourself. Let your name alone be glorified and honor your word concerning our life. We give you all the glory, we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. Child of God, we want to thank you for joining us today. We pray that you continue to fellowship with the Lord in prayer and in studying the word in this season of fasting and prayers. And you join us at the same time tomorrow and your life will never be the same. God bless you all. Amen.
Thank you.